in this lecture we are going to learn about what we call the uh, separable differential equations separable different uh, differential equations separable differential equations separable differential equations so this is uh, one of the very important type um, we're going to use this uh, pretty much everywhere in this uh, rest of the course um, so let's talk about what we uh, learned so far so the first one uh, we had was uh, when a differential equation of the form when a differential equation when a differential equation uh, is of the form is of the form let's say uh, you have y prime which is a function of the independent variable so this is the easiest case so in this case what we can do is we can simply uh, integrate so you integrate the function um, and then uh, you're gonna get the solution we normally don't add the c here because uh, c is already in, uh, inside the indefinite integral so we normally don't do that um, now if the the uh, difference uh, y prime equal the function of y y is the independent variable you cannot just integrate this one what we need to do is you need to rewrite the differential equation like dx over dy uh, equal so what you do is a y prime is d y over dx but we write dx over dy that means upside down so it's become 1 over gy uh, now what we can do is we can use similar argument as we did before but we need to integrate with respect to x now uh, with respect to y now if you do that so you're going to get y equal um, 1 over that's not y actually so x equal so you're going to get uh, so x equal 1 over g y uh, dy so that's what you get so those are the two cases we did so far so one is uh, the function is the um, function of the independent variable so that you can just integrate that and the second one is the function is the dependent variable in that case you can just integrate you have to make it upside down and then you integrate so that's the uh, difference between the two cases now let's see what happen what happen uh, if you have the general case so let's say what if okay so what if uh, y prime equal f x y so this is a general case it's not just x alone or y alone uh, so it's a function of function of both x and y so we have both x and y so um, but in that case there is a problem now so let's say you have y equal uh, so if you try to do the same thing as before so we have uh, y prime equal fx y now if you try to do the same thing as before for example if you integrate with respect to um, x here so you're going to get y equal the integral of fx y dx now you can see that there's nothing you can do here because there's a y that we don't know inside the function so that means you're gonna get stuck here so um, so that's it that's the only thing you can do so you cannot uh, finish the integral here okay so that means in the general case gonna create problems so that means what we what we're trying to do now we're gonna uh, do like a case by case situation okay. so um, so the first case is what we're trying to learn is what we call the separable differential equation let's, so let's try to talk about that so what's a separable differential equation separable separable uh, differential equations separable differential uh, equations so uh, the name suggests something so that means what you can do is you can separate the independent and dependent variable so that's what separable means you can separate the independent and dependent variable so let's try the definition so what's the definition a differential equation a differential equation 
differential equation uh, is separable differential equation is separable if uh, it is of the form if it is if it is of the form if it is of the form um, dy over dx is a product of two functions x alone and y alone so you can see that you can separate the function as a product of the independent variable and the dependent variable so if you can do that we call this is a separable differential equation so you separate the two variables into x and y okay so it has to be product not a sum okay it's a product of uh, we can say product of two functions product of two functions product of two functions x and y alone okay product of two functions x and y alone so you can write this as a product of x and y alone okay so and then you so if this is the case you can you say the differential equation is separable separable you separate them into um, the two variable so let's do um, some examples so check whether check whether check whether the following differential equations are separable check whether the following uh, differential equations differential equations are separable okay. check whether the following differential equations are separable uh, so the first one let's look at dy over dx equal x squared plus x squared y so if you get a differential equation like that uh, what do you want to do you want to check whether you can write this as a product of x and y alone so the best thing would be factor okay so you're going to factor it so once you factor if you take x squared out you can see that is 1 plus y and you can see that this is a product of two functions the first one is fx second one is gy so, uh, so you can see that that is the uh, fx function that is the gy function okay so it doesn't matter which one comes first but it's just a product uh, so what we uh, did was we factor okay so fact so the factoring is the key uh, tool here so you can see that yes so it's a product of two functions so so this is separable okay so yes so let's do uh, another one how about this one uh, y prime equal x e to the x plus y um, so when you have exponential function be careful because the product uh, becomes say sum when you do exponential function so uh, so in this case what we can do we can separate uh, you can write the uh, exponential part as a product so it's ex times ey now you can see that it's very clear that uh, what are the two functions so this is the x function and this is the uh, y function so you can write this as a, a product of two functions uh, fx and gy so yes okay uh, how about the next one Mm. let's say dy over dx equal ln xy uh, what do you think fx dy over dx equal ln xy so it's, you see that uh, there's a product inside but uh, unfortunately when you expand this ln x is a product so it becomes a sum so this is not a product so that means you cannot write this as a product of two functions of x and y alone so so no okay because you can write um, you cannot okay i'm gonna write like a little bit more like that so this is uh, the, so this uh, 
the sun equals to a product of fx and gy so that means it is not a separable differential equation it, it looks like separable but unfortunately it's not okay so number four how about this one uh, x squared y prime equal one minus x squared plus y squared minus x squared y squared so if you get a problem like that uh, so you can see I mean only tool is factoring okay so see whether you can factor this uh, so how are you going to factor so this is like there are four terms here maybe grouping uh, my work here so let's see whether you can do that so if you look at these two terms you can see that uh, y squared is common so if you take y squared out so it is 1 minus x squared and you can see that 1 minus x squared is already there in the first two terms so that means yes so we can group it um, so what we can do we can write this as um, 1 minus x squared that's a common term and then you're going to get 1 from the first term uh, y squared from the second term okay so you can see that you already factor this but we are not done yet because we have the x squared term so what we're going to do you can divide both sides by that but i'm going to divide the x term with the x squared times uh, 1 plus y squared and you can see that uh, so this is the, the first one is the x term the second one is the y term so you can see that so that is the x term and that is the uh, y term so those are two terms so you can see that yes so it is a um, it is a separable differential equation okay so i think it's, it's very clear now so what do you want to do so the major tool is factoring okay so factoring and after you factor then you can move terms around and so that it is a product of uh, the two functions good so uh okay so let's do mm, let's talk about the theory you know how how the uh, theory gonna work in this kind of situations so now question is how to solve such a differential equation so let's talk about that now so so the question is how to solve how to solve a separable differential equation how to solve a separable differential equation how to solve a separable differential equation um so so we just just discussed that a separable differential equation means a differential equation that you can write as a product of the two uh, variables independent and the dependent variables so this is a separable differential equation because you separate the two variables now what we are going to do uh, we are going to separate the uh, so you write as a product and then we are going to separate the two variables that means you try to get the x to one side and y to the other side so let's do that so we can do uh, separate separate the two variables okay so you're gonna separate the two variables so what you do you can take one to uh, y to one side x to the other side so what we can do we can divide both sides by gy uh, so if you do that then you can write this one as dy over gy dy or gy equal if you move dx to the other side this become fx dx so you can see that you separate the x variables to one side the y variables to the other side okay so now what we can do is um, so you're going to integrate uh, both sides okay so we can integrate both sides okay so integrating integrating both sides So if you integrate both sides, what are you going to get? dy over gy, the integral equals the integral of fx dx. 
so you can see so we use this as a formula so this is the formula for the uh, separable method so it works for any problem like that so you're going to separate the so first you write this as a product of uh, x and y and after that what you can do you're going to move the y terms one side x terms the other side and then you can integrate the two sides so this is the formula and then at the end what we can do we can add the c to one side okay so i'm going to write this as a naught so add a constant at the c to the right i mean you can just write, write add to any side but we normally add it to the right side so it doesn't really matter but it makes it easy right side okay so uh, that's how it works so you can see it's not that difficult um, so let's try to see a couple of examples how uh, things gonna work um, so the example number one so let's say uh, so I'm gonna say solve the following differential equations solve the following uh, separable equations separable I'm only giving separable equations right now okay so we know how to check whether it's separable or not so if it's not separable you cannot do it like this okay so so the first one dy over dx uh, equal x squared y plus x squared okay. so uh, dy over dx equal x squared y plus x squared is this separable actually we cannot see right now whether it's separable or not so what we can do, we can check whether it's separable by rewriting this as a product. So let's do that. So we have uh, dy by dx equal x squared y plus x squared. And then uh, what you can do is you can take x squared out. So it's going to be y plus 1. Once you write that y plus 1, what you can do is uh, you can divide the two sides so the dy over uh, y plus 1 equal uh, x squared so that's the separation and then what we can do uh, we can integrate so I'm gonna say separate okay so separate and then uh, integrate okay so you can integrate the two sides so the dy over y plus 1 equal the integral of uh, the x squared and if you integrate uh, this side this is going to be ln uh, y plus 1 and the other side is the integral of x uh, cube is uh, x squared is x3 over 3 plus c uh, and then now what we're going to do is uh, we're going to take the uh, so next uh, what we can do is um, so we can uh, remove the log sign so how to do that we're going to bring this to the exponential function so that means we know that we have done this before several times so what we can write is we can write this one as uh, y plus 1 and equal so this is the exponential function uh, so this x cube over 3 plus c and you know that since you remove the absolute sign there, there's a plus or minus coming out and then what we normally do is we can write this one as plus or minus e to the c and e to the x 3 over 3 and then uh, we can take this all everything just as another c okay so by abuse of notation remember we talk about that so you can just consider this just as a c so that means this simply gonna be c e x cube over 3 uh, and then what we can do is we can move this uh, one to the other side so y is simply you can write c e x 3 over 3 minus 1 and uh, so this is the uh, general solution of the differential equation okay so this is this is the uh, general solution general solution okay the general solution okay so let's do uh, more examples i think it's, it's very clear now so again if you go back to the problem so we have dy over dx equal x squared y plus x squared and you can see it's a sum so it's not a product so what do you do you're going to write this as a product simply by factoring so you factor it okay so you factor it so that's the main tool for this 
uh, type factor once you factor you can see there is a product of x and y uh, so what do you do you're going to move the y terms to one side and you leave the x terms the other side and then after you do that you're going to integrate two sides okay so you integrate two sides uh, you can integrate two sides so it's a uh, we forget the dx here. Uh, you integrate the two sides, so it's a dy uh, over dy over y plus one equal x square dx. And once you integrate the two sides, what's going to happen? You know, ln y plus one equal x three over three plus c. You add only one c to one side, and after you get that, what are you going to do? You need to solve for y. How to solve for y? Uh, you're going to write the exponential function. Uh, so you write the exponential function, and you remove the absolute sign. That means plus or minus uh, comes here. Uh, so and then uh, what's going to happen uh, plus or minus e to the c uh, you're going to write as uh, as just c okay just another c uh, and then uh, you can move the one to the other side so you're going to get this as a general solution so you can see that it's not that difficult um, so it's, it's easy to solve it's, it's, it's like easy problem okay let's do more uh, so let's do the next problem uh, so how about this one uh, so again uh, so let's say find the general solution find the general solution of find the general solution of y prime equal negative x y squared over 3 okay um, so this is already a product so that means you don't have to do much here so the but you want to see uh, whether whether there are um, uh, trivial solutions so you can see that so the answer so you can see that uh, first note that first not that first note that y equals 0 is a solution okay y equals 0 is a solution because you see that when you have y equals 0, uh, y prime also equal to 0. So the, if you plug in the two y equals 0 and y prime equal to uh, 0 to the both sides, it satisfies the equation. So that's the reason why uh, that y equals 0 is a solution. So to find other solutions, we assume that, okay, so we assume that, okay, assume that uh, y not equal to 0. Assume that y not equal to 0. So if y not equal to 0 then you're going to get um, uh, so what you can do is you can divide both sides by y squared so we have dy over y squared equal negative x over 3 uh, dx and then uh, we can integrate both sides okay so so integrate uh, both sides okay if you integrate both sides so you're going to get dy over uh, y squared equal uh, negative one third the integral of x dx. Uh, this is very easy to integrate. So how do you integrate dy over y squared? Uh, so what you can do is we have dy over y squared the integral. You can write this one as y to the negative 2 dy and then, then you can rule the power rule so what's the power rule uh, you can add 1 and divide it by that so that means y to the negative 1 over negative 1 plus c this one you can write as negative 1 over y uh, plus c so this uh, so it will be useful if you remember this uh, this calculation because we do that a lot okay so bring it to the top and then integrate okay so let's go back to the problem so so that means because of that um, so this side is simply 1 over negative 1 over y negative 1 over y and here negative 1 third so this x that means it's going to be x squared we just add a c x squared plus c um, so now what we can do is we can multiply by the negative sign just to make it better so we're going to multiply by negative so it's going to be uh, so negative is gone so the beginning of one third uh, x squared this be negative c i mean you can still say plus c uh, because just a c um, so if you want you can just say negative c positive c it doesn't really matter okay now uh, 
what we want to do, we're going to solve for y. Uh, before we do that, we take the common denominator. So if you take the, uh, if you take the, uh, okay, so actually there had been a mistake here. Uh, so this is, uh, Uh, so when you when you divide, uh, you're gonna get what you're gonna get. Uh, so this is uh, this is a uh, so this can be six actually. So let's fix it. Uh, so this is six and that is six. So you can see that. Uh, so this will be uh, x squared over two. This three is become six. So this also six. So let's take the common denominator. Once we take the common denominator, so what's gonna happen? So it is gonna be six. So this is x squared minus uh, 6c that's what you get uh, now what we can do we're going to make it upside down so flip over so we're going to say y equals 6 over uh, x squared minus uh, 6c so this is the general solution so that's the general solution to this problem so uh, now let's see how we can uh, like if you give an additional conditions how we can solve this like you know find c for this um, so let's continue the uh, problem so let's continue it uh, so let's say uh, uh, find a particular solution find a particular solution find a particular solution if y0 equal negative uh, y0 equal 1 let's say y equal 0 is uh, uh, negative 1 okay so like that find a particular solution if y0 equal negative 1 so what you can do is you can plug in that to the uh, equation so if you plug in that to the equation uh, so what do you have is uh, uh, so what we can do we can plug in so it's a negative 1 equal uh, so negative 1 equal y0 that means wherever you see x you plug in 0 so uh, so what you have is 6 over uh, x is 0 so it is 0 cube minus 6 c and then if you simplify this one you are going to get 6 over uh, 6 c negative 6 c and then you can see that x get uh, can uh, 6 get cancelled so you simply get uh, negative 1 over c now uh, to get the negative sign you see that c has to be uh, 1 okay so c equal 1 now what we can do is you can go back and plug in that value here so y equal uh, you have uh, 6 over uh, x uh, cube uh, x cube minus uh, 6 okay. so uh, that's the uh, final uh, answer for that problem okay uh, very good so let's do uh, more um, how about another problem so number three so solve uh, x squared y prime equal 1 minus x squared plus y squared minus x squared y with y1 equals 0 uh, actually remember like you know, we start with this problem at the beginning and we check whether this is separable so we know that this is a separable equation but let's do it again so uh, so what you do uh, by factoring by factoring okay by factoring we can write this one as x squared y prime equal uh, 1 minus x squared plus y squared minus x squared y squared what do we do we're going to factor these two you can see that y squared is common so you're going to get 1 minus x squared so that means uh, 1 minus x squared is the common factor and then you can have 1 from the first one and then y squared from the second one so those are two factoring so you can see that so you write this as a product so that's good now what we can do um, we can divide both sides by x squared so we have dy over dx equal 1 minus x squared that's from that side divided by x squared and then we have 1 plus y squared here 
and then uh, what we can do is we can move the x terms and y terms to two sides so we have dy over 1 plus y squared equal uh, here we have 1 minus x squared over x squared uh, dx uh, but we can rewrite this one so you can divide by x squared so we have 1 ma 1 over x squared if you divide the second term by x squared you get negative 1 so that's what you get and dx okay now what we can do we can integrate the two sides uh, separately so we can integrate the two sides so if you integrate the two sides uh, so you're going to get so integrating both sides integrating uh, both sides integrating both sides so we have uh, dy over 1 plus y squared equal 1 over x squared minus 1 uh, dx uh, so once you integrate you're going to get what is the integral of dy over 1 plus x squared so let's recall uh, some of the formulas so remember we have when we have dx over <coughs> 1 plus x squared so this is the integral of tan inverse okay tan inverse uh, plus c so it's the same thing but instead of x we have y so there is no uh, major difference here so this simply become tan inverse y uh, here 1 over x squared we did a problem like that so you can bring it to the top so this becomes simply negative 1 over x we just did a problem like that and minus x minus 1 minus 1 simply going to be uh, minus minus x and then plus c now what we're going to do is uh, you know solve for y you can't i mean you can leave it like that but it should be better if you can simplify uh, if you can solve for y go ahead and solve for y so what we're going to do is we're going to take the uh, tan of both sides once you take the tan of both sides this is going to be y equal uh, because tan tan is get cancelled so you can get tan uh, we normalize the positive terms for so I'm going to see first minus 1 now x minus x so that is the uh, the solution to the problem okay so we can write like that but uh, we know that we were given uh, a initial condition here uh, so what's the initial condition y1 equals 0 so now let's try to use that fact here to find the c okay so we know that uh, the uh, y1 equals 0 to find y1 equals 0 so what we're going to do uh, we can use the condition here so uh, we can see using the initial condition using the initial condition using the initial condition y1 equal uh, 0 uh, we have 0 equal uh, tan uh, so just put uh, x equal 1 if you put x equal 1 what's going to happen so this is c minus uh, so if you put 1 here uh, this is 1 and this is another one so it's minus 2 so that's what you get so now what you want to know is we are know when the tan we solve for c to to solve for c we need to know when the tan going to be 0 so let's look at the graph of tangent so if you look at the graph of tangent uh, what's going to happen so this is a graph of tangent function so we have a uh, asymptote here so this is going like that as a zero and then also we have another one like that and then uh, another one like that okay so uh so negative pi so this is the graph of uh tangent function so you can see that the uh, tangent gonna be zero at the multiples of pi so that means this part is simply a multiple of pi so we write k pi and k is an integer so we write it like that okay so that means um uh, we can say c minus 2 has to be a multiple of pi uh, where k is an integer uh, so that means c equal 2 plus k pi 
so that means y equal um, so you can plug in that there so tangent uh, 2 plus k pi 2 plus k pi 2 plus k pi uh, 2 plus k pi minus 1 over x minus x uh, where k is an integer so that's the final answer to that problem so so there are some a little bit of trigonometry uh, we use uh, and then we also use one of the formula from the integration table the tan inverse okay so uh, so let's talk about the implicit differential the implicit uh, let's talk about the what we call the implicit uh, solutions implicit solutions uh, so we have what we call implicit solutions okay implicit solution uh, so what's an implicit solution so let's look at this problem and it will be very clear uh, what we mean by implicit solution so the example uh, solve solve the uh, separable equation solve the separable uh, equation uh, y prime equal uh, xy over y squared plus 1 uh, so as before what we can do we can separate the two variables so separate the variable so the answer so let's say uh, separate uh, the variables separate the variables uh, y squared plus 1 over y dy equal uh, x dx y squared plus 1 over y dy equal x dx and then what you can do uh, actually you can write this one as uh, you can simplify this so you're gonna get y plus 1 over y after dividing and dy equal x dx now what we're gonna do is uh, we can integrate okay integrating integrating we have y squared over 2 plus ln uh, y equal x squared over 2 uh, plus c uh, now what we can do is actually this is the solution you can see that it's a relation between x and y that satisfies the equation uh, but we can do better we can multiply the two sides by 2 so if you multiply two sides by 2 it's bigger y squared 2 ln y equal x squared plus 2 c and also uh, if you want you can bring this two inside of the log so if you bring two inside of the log you can write this one as um, as uh, y squared plus ln y squared then you don't need the absolute sign because it's always positive and then x squared plus this 2c you can just call c just a constant okay so that is the uh, solution but you can see that it's, it's very difficult to solve for y so we leave it like that so this is what we call an implicit solution implicit solution because it's, it's difficult to solve for y um, so if the y is inside the log function or exponential function this normally happen uh, so we call this implicit solution so this is the so this is uh, you can say this gives y as an implicit a uh, solution okay equals an implicit solution it's not an explicit solution it's not like y equals something but y is inside so we call these are implicit solutions it's not explicit but implicit okay it's implicit solution okay so let's do uh, uh let's do one more let's do one more so how about uh, this problem mm. example a uh, solve solve y prime equal x 
e to the x plus 1 along with y0 equals 0. So first, like we need to check whether this is separable, and you can see that this is separable, uh, but you need to do something uh, to see that. So what we did, so you can say rewriting, uh, rewriting, uh, we have y prime equal, y prime equal x, a x, e y, okay, you can separate, you're going to write the um, exponential part as a product. Uh, now we're going to separate the variables. So separating variables, separating uh, variables, once separate the variables, you're going to see uh, this is dy over uh, ey. And on the other side, you have uh, x, ex, dx. This one you can write as e to the negative y, dy, equal x, ex, dx. Now what we can do, integrate. Okay, so integrating. Okay, so you can integrate. Once you integrate, you're going to get e to the negative y, dy, equal x, e to the x, dx. So we're going to integrate the two sides. Uh, the first uh, left side is easy. Uh, so we can use one of the result uh, from uh, calc 1. So what is that? If you have an integral e to the k, x, dx, k is a constant. This is simply 1 over k e to the kx plus c. So we can use that result here, but instead of x, we have y now. So if you use that result, you're going to get uh, for this side, it is simply uh, e to the negative y divided by 1, negative 1. Okay, So that's that side. And how to do the other one? For, to do the other one, you have to use the integration by parts. Okay, So we can do that. So what are the integration by parts here? Uh, we know that if you have this kind of problem, you have to speak u equal x, okay, and then dv equal uh, e to the x dx, take the derivative, so du equal dx, take the integral e to the ex. Now we have everything we need, so we're going to plug in there. It's a, so the integral is uh, uv, uv means x ex uv minus v du. Uh, what is the v? v is ex, so it's ex dx. Okay, uh, and then uh, you can finish <coughs> this side. So you're gonna get x e x. If you integrate this one, you're gonna e to the negative e to the ne negative e to the x plus c. And then on this side, it is uh, e to the negative y and a negative sign. Okay. So, and then what we can do is we can multiply by negative. Uh, so you're gonna get e to the negative y equal, and then you can write this one as uh, e x minus x uh, e to the x and then we have a negative c uh, now what we can do is uh, we can take the uh, we can take the log of both sides okay we can take the log of uh, both sides once you take the log of both sides uh, what's going to happen is uh, so let's take the natural log so if you have, if you take the natural log of both sides, so you're gonna get, uh, so you're gonna get uh, negative y equal uh, ln uh, e x minus x e to the x uh, minus c, and then uh, we can multiply by negative sign. Multiply by negative sign is y equal negative ln e x minus x e x minus c uh, negative means you can write this one as upside down so this is uh, 1 over 1 over uh, uh, you can write actually uh, so that's not how it goes uh, so once you bring the negative sign that's the power so uh, what can happen is the term gonna go in uh, upside down whatever the term since the natural log the term so that means uh, 1 over ex uh, minus x ex uh, minus c so, so that's what happened okay now uh, what we can do is uh, we can use the uh, relation that we have to find the uh, constant so we can say using using 
y is 0 equal 0 uh, so let's say uh, so what's going to happen uh, you can say 0 equal so y0 y0 means you can plug in wherever you see x plug in 0 so it's ln uh, so you can see uh, 1 over uh, e to the 0 uh, minus 0 minus c uh, so that means this is simply natural log uh, 1 over you can see uh, 1 minus c uh, so now the question is uh, uh, to get 0 you know that this has to be 1 so to get 0 uh, you know that this part has to be 1 okay to so once this part is 1 you get 0 so that means you can set that equal so you see that uh, so this implies that uh, 1 minus c equal 1 in other words c equals 0 so c has to be 0 so that means uh, your solution is y equal uh, y equal uh, ln 1 over uh, ex minus uh, x ex so like that so that's the uh, solution to the initial value problem okay so so this is the solution to the initial value problem this is the solution to the initial value problem okay good um so uh, so what you can do is uh, so let's do like a last problem of this type so let's say solve uh, let's say sin x uh, sin x uh, dy over dx uh, equal uh, let's say uh, uh, ey tan x okay. something like that uh, so and I'm going to leave the answer for this one so this uh, why didn't you try this as an exercise I'm going to leave the answer for this one in the description okay so answer in the description answer in the description okay so try to do this as an as an exercise so you can see the answer for this problem in the description of the video okay so yeah so what we have is sin x dy over dx equal ey tan x so what you want to do is uh, you need to do some kind of trigonometry uh, before you uh, can bring it to separable equation so so use some trigonometry to write this as a separable equation first and then you can integrate Good. So let's do one last problem. Uh, so what we're trying to do here is we can do we can use uh, we can do some uh, application problem. Uh, so application. Okay. Application. Uh, so let's say uh, a, a cup of coffee uh, with a temperature of eighty nine uh, degrees. A cup of coffee uh, with a temperature of with the temperature of uh, 89 degrees uh, is in a room of temperature is in a room of temperature 22 celsius okay <coughs> so you leave a cup of coffee in a room uh, which has a temperature of 22 and the cup uh, has the temperature of 89 uh, celsius uh, degrees okay so let's say after one minute after uh, one minute after one minute uh, later you can say after one minute later uh, its temperature is temperature is temperature is at 25 celsius so the question is so you wait uh, 
actually not 25, 85, 85 Celsius, 25, too long, 85 Celsius. So the question is, how long will it take to reach uh, say, uh, 60, okay, so how long, how long uh, will it take, will it take, how long will it take for the temperature for the temperature to reach to reach 60 uh, degrees 60 degrees okay so so the question is very clear a cup of coffee with a temperature of 89 celsius is in a room of temperature 22 after one minute later its temperature is at 85 celsius so the question is how long will it take for the temperature to reach 60 degrees um, so let's look at the situation now. Uh, so we know that the room temperature, I'm going to call it T naught, uh, which is 22 uh, Celsius. So there's a cup, uh, so which is at which is at uh, 89 degrees. So I'm going to call T zero equal uh, 89. And then you wait one minute. Okay. After one minute, the temperature are going to be after one minute. The temperature. So I'm going to measure the time by uh, minute. So uh, it is going to be 85. And then, uh, so the question is, how long we need to wait, starting from the beginning, uh, to reach? Uh, 60 so temperature until the temperature going to be 60 I'm going to call that time T star so the question is now the temperature is 60 so so the question is how long we need to wait okay so, uh, so I'm going to discuss some of the notations here actually we should have start with that notation first but I'm going to write it right now okay so let's say let T uh, be the temperature be the temperature be the temperature of uh, the coffee temperature of the coffee at t minute okay at t minute and then uh, let t naught be the uh, room temperature with the room temperature so then what we can do is we can use the uh, what we call the uh, Newton's cooling law so then we can write uh, so let's say according to the according to according to uh, Newton's Newton's uh, cooling law According to Newton's cooling law, we know that the derivative of the temperature is proportional to the temperature difference. So we normally write this one as uh, constant times t minus t naught. So this is how we normally write the Newton's cooling law. Okay, so uh, dt over dt equal k times t minus t naught. Now what we can do? Uh, so you can see that. This is already a, a, a separable equation. So this is a separable equation. This is a uh, separable uh, equation. So that means we can uh, separate the two variables. So we can write this one as dt over t minus t naught. The other side is k dt. Now what we can do? We can uh, integrate the two sides. So by integrating. Okay. by integrating we have dt over t minus t naught equal k dt so we integrate the two sides and this is very clear uh, so this is t naught is a constant so we know that the integral of this side is simply ln t minus t naught you can also use the u sub for this one but this one is you don't need u sub you can see this is a constant so you're gonna if you take the derivative you're gonna get that 
so that means integral is like that okay so and the other side is k uh, t plus c because it, at this level you should be able to like kind of do something like this fast like that without those substitutions um, okay now what we can do we can write this one as the uh, exponential functions is a t minus t naught so this is the exponential uh, you can write this one as um, doing the regular work so we can write a e to the kt so i skip some step because now we know what to do here and then what we can do is uh, we can move um, the t naught to the other side so this is simply going to be t equal t naught plus a e k t so that's a differential equation uh, that's a solution to that and then we know that the t naught is 22 so it's a 22 plus a e k t so we still uh, don't know two constant we don't know what is a and we also don't know what is k so the goal is to find those two so we need to know what is a we don't know that and we also need to know what is k so so the goal is to uh, find those two so let's use some facts uh, that we have uh, we know that uh, the initial temperature so let's try to use that uh, so using the initial temperature you can say using using t 0 equal 89 uh, we have 89 equal uh, 22 plus a e to the 0 this can give you uh, a equal uh, 67 so that means your equation is now t equal 22 plus 67 uh, e to the negative kt now the goal is to find k but we know that uh, after one minute the temperature is 85 so we can use that fact so that means 85 equal 22 plus 67 e to the negative k times 1 okay k times 1 so in other words if you simplify this one you're going to get 63 equal 67 e to the negative k now what we can do is <coughs> you this one you can write as e to the negative k equals 63 over 67 now we can take the log of both sides once you take the log of both sides this is going to be negative k equal ln 63 over 67 okay. uh, and then so this is going to give k so this says that the k equal a negative ln 63 over 67 or in other words uh, when you uh, flip it over so when you flip it over uh, yeah when you flip it over so what happens so you can try this one as ln 67 over 63 <coughs> so uh, so let's plug in that in the equation once you plug in that in the equation uh, what's gonna happen actually you can simplify this one so if you simplify this one uh, this is roughly uh, you're gonna get yeah you're gonna get point uh, 0 6 uh, 1 6 okay so that means therefore okay therefore we have t to the t equal uh, 22 plus 67 e to the uh, negative point uh, 0 6 1 6 t okay so that's the uh, that's the different that's a solution to the differential equation uh, and you can see that uh, so if you look at the graph of this one how it looks like what's the graph of this <coughs> so this is the temperature t of t so this is the time and you can see that uh, uh, it's going to start with uh, <coughs> uh, so when you plug in uh, t equals 0 so you're gonna get one so you can start with 89 and then what's gonna happen 
it's going to go in exponential decay uh, situation so it's going to go down and you can see uh, this term goes to zero so in the long run uh, this term goes to uh, zero so that means you end up with 22 so that means it's never go down below 22 so that's 22 that's 22 so what's going to happen it's going to decay in exponential order and then reach that value and you can see in practice this never going to reach because you need to go to infinity uh, but that's the kind of situation uh, that you get in this kind of uh, <coughs> cases and you you may notice that actually I change uh, k to negative k uh, but it doesn't really matter yeah see how k and then I all of a sudden has changed that to uh, negative k uh, yeah but you can just do it with a k or negative k uh, but those two k's are not the same but at the end it doesn't really matter once you get the solution whether you have a k if you have a k you get a negative sign if you have a negative k you get a positive sign so but at the end the solution is the same okay now what we can do uh, to find the value uh, t you just need to uh, we need to find what's the time when the temperature reach 60 so what we're gonna do uh, we're gonna we're gonna equate this to 60 and try to find the corresponding uh, time so you're gonna see when it's 60 what is the time so that's a simple algebra problem so let's finish that part uh, so what we have is uh, so to find to find to find the required time required time to find the required time uh, t t naught uh, you said this equal to 60 which is 22 plus 67 uh, e to the negative point 0 616 t star t star and then uh, uh, we can solve for t so that's not a difficult problem we can move the uh, 22 to the other side and then divide by 60 uh, <coughs> so you can see that uh, e to the negative point zero uh, 616 t star equal uh, 60 minus 22 over 67 I leave it like that for you to do the algebra now what we can do we can take the natural log if you take the natural log of both sides you're gonna get uh, t star equal ln uh, 60 <coughs> minus 22 over 67 I leave it like that okay intentionally for you to do the algebra now what we can do we can divide by uh, the uh, negative to find t naught you can uh, divide it by that so it's a negative uh, we have uh, 1 over point zero six one six uh, ln uh, 60 minus 22 means 42 that's an easy calculation uh, <coughs> actually uh, 48 so uh, 38 so let's do that that's not really easy so uh, yeah so we have 38 over uh, 67 and then you uh, you can use a calculator for that and once you use a calculator you're gonna see that it's roughly 9.21 minute okay so uh, so you can say the time taken for the coffee cup cup to reach uh, 60 degrees is about 9.21 mi uh, minute why we say about because there are a lot of uh, assumptions so we don't get exact 9.21 but we get roughly or very close to 9.21 okay so this is the uh, end of the uh, what we call the separable method so the last one is an example well, actually application problem how to use the separable method to solve it um, real world uh, problem okay so thank you oh, so much mm.